Okay, so for this equation, we want to once again make sure that the equation is linear before we start any of the linear process. And you notice that it is linear because both the y and the y prime occur to the first power. There's no division with them. There's no functions applied to them. And again, the other variable, the independent variable, it can have anything going on. Any power doesn't matter. Next thing to do is check the form. Remember, again, you have to start off with a single y prime plus a coefficient function times y. You'll notice here that we have a t in front of the y prime, so we need to move that out of there by dividing the entire equation by that t to clear it out. And when we do that, we end up now with just plain y prime equals, or I should say plus, the coefficient 4 over t times y is equal to just 6 times t. And now we have a coefficient function. You'll notice I put parentheses around it because that helps us kind of identify it and keep it off to the side. So now this is what we're going to use when we build our integrating factor. So off to the side, our mu of t is going to be e to the integral of 4 over t dt. And that integrates into just e to the 4 ln t. We notice we don't put an arbitrary constant plus c up here, and we really don't need absolute values on the t as well because we're going to use it as a multi multiplication. But if we do put it there, we can just kind of ignore them. We do want to simplify this down before we use it. One of the biggest mistakes of linear equations is to use an unsimplified integrating factor, which makes things really bad. So again, we want to simplify, and the first thing we want to do is move that 4 using the rules of exponents components for logs and bring that up here so that we actually have an e to the natural log of t to the fourth. And you notice that we don't need absolute values again because even if you did take absolute values, t to the fourth is still a positive term. The next thing you'll notice is we can now take the inverse property and use it and that simplifies down to just plain t to the fourth. So for this equation, the integrating factor is t to the fourth power. All right, now the next thing you want to do with this integrating factor is multiply it on both sides of the differential equation. So we have our t to the fourth multiplied with our y prime plus 4 over ty, and that's equal to the same t to the fourth multiplied by the existing 6 times t on the right-hand side. Next step is to distribute. So in doing so, we're going to have a t to the fourth times y prime. And then when we distribute that t to the fourth to the second term, we're going to have a 4 times t cubed times the y. And on the right-hand side, we have 6 times t to the fifth. Next step again is to rewrite this as the derivative of a product. And this is clearly the derivative of our t to the fourth times y that we're differentiating to create the left side. And again, that's 6 times t to the fifth. We now need to integrate both sides with respect to the independent variable. This time around, it's t. So we integrate both sides with respect to t. And in doing so, we're going to have a t to the fourth times y. The integral of 6t to the fifth is just t to the sixth plus the arbitrary constant c. And then our last step, of course, is to divide both sides to get the y by itself. So divide both sides by t to the fourth. And that gives us a y of t, which is equal to t squared plus c times t to the negative fourth power. And that is the solution of this linear equation. And again, you can check your work by just going through and taking the derivative and substituting it back into the original differential equation and verifying that it makes a true statement.